Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Capricorn. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Capricorn, I'm doing your reading today with my giant stack of three decks blended in one. So you're going to see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got the completion card on the split. This is one of the directional compass cards in this deck. So it says completion. And then passion or the soul. So it's kind of coming through with something along the lines of like wanting to see the completion of like a passion project of yours, something like that. I feel like it wants to go in that direction for me because I almost feel like I'm addressing a writer today. I feel like I'm talking to a writer about like almost like a novelist, somebody who's writing a novel and is just kind of maybe having a hard time wrapping it up or figuring out some aspect of it. It's something like that. So it's like you're, you're looking for that last missing piece perhaps. Um, but then, you know, it could be applied in a broader context in the sense of you know, being the writer of your own story, that kind of a thing, right? Because it seems like we're focused on a particular character within this story. I'm not sure why I'm feeling like I'm addressing the writer. So it's almost like you are uh, like one step removed from the actual storyline in a sense. Well, you're the creator of it, the designer of it, perhaps. So, okay, let's, let's pull a, an overall energy from the Creativity Oracle for Capricorn. There's this truck that just pulled up right out front of my window. It's got this big sign on it that says like the name of the, a furniture company. And it's just, it's so blatantly right in my face that I keep just thinking it's a sign of some kind or, you know, it means something. It doesn't mean anything to me particularly. You know, one of those, like, it's like so right in your face that you almost don't see it. Maybe that's part of your answer here with this final piece that you're searching for. You know what I mean? It's almost like I'm trying to look past it to some other idea, but it's like, it's right there. Okay. So creativity Oracle for Capricorn. Visualize. So the card says visualize, and I feel like everything that I was just saying to you is exactly this image right here, right? It's like, here's me trying to read your cards. And then here's this sign right outside my window. And it's like, I want to, I want to kind of be in this imaginal realm, this kind of flow state where I can pull in this, this information or this idea for you. But it's like, it's almost like it's right there, right in your face. Okay, so I'm not even going to read the back. I don't think that's significant. It's really, it just is what it is. Okay, so Capricorn. We're beginning your reading with this leadership card. And this is kind of setting the tone for me, perhaps, because it, it feels to me like the lead, the lead role, the lead character in the story could be you, right? Like you don't know, you're, maybe you're not an author, maybe you're not a creator of any particular kind, but you are the creator, the director of your life, right? So it's talking about the fact that you are, because you are the leader or because you are focused on that leadership position, there's a lot of flexibility that is being required of you or of this character in this particular moment. It's something like, because you are the lead or we're talking about the lead character, it's almost like because it's the lead, that character kind of needs to have the biggest experience or the biggest kind of character development or learning experience like throughout the story. See what I'm saying? Um, the biggest transformation from beginning to end because it's the leadership position. It has got all the focus on it and more is required of it. But this idea of flexibility is also talking about that there needs to be kind of a flexibility applied to this position. It's like 
something like because it's the leader, you expect them to be really stable and unwavering in a sense, but it's almost like that's counteractive to what needs to happen next for this character or for your work or for this creation if you are writing a story, right? Because we're talking about the Eight of Earth and this Discipline card, right? So the Eight of Earth talks about your work. These are such beautiful images, actually. And this, this Discipline card next to it, it's something like that you have a very practiced, well-defined and refined process of working. The work that you do is well-defined and refined and is masterful in a sense, right? Because you've spent an incredible amount of time developing these skills and you're incredibly disciplined about it. But it's almost like there's something about that that is perhaps counter into not counterintuitive. It's going against this, this flow or this shift that needs to occur next because it's almost like a practiced routine, a practiced way of doing it is it's now changing or a change needs to occur perhaps in order to get this last piece. It's not going to come in the traditional way. It's not going to come in the same way as all of the other things. And all of the other things, all of the other developments or um, elements that you've added to this story have come in perhaps a very, do I want to say gentle way? I don't, I don't know if that's the right word because I don't, I don't know if the if the new way is any less gentle, but there's something there about that, about almost um, kind of, well, maybe even just something as subtly different as what I'm describing here with kind of staring off into the ethers and tapping into the flow state and kind of receiving inspiration versus or opposed to the kind of just abrupt like blatant, vibrant, colorful sign that's right in my face. You see how that's like a much more abrupt energy rather than this, this more subtle. Okay. So because this queen of earth and this seven of earth, there's something really fascinating about these earth energies here in this reading that I think are maybe tying back into the last Capricorn reading. I'm kind of getting a little bit of a remembrance of in the extended kind of talking about something particularly unique about Capricorn being such an earthy energy, but almost, it's almost like it's so earthy because you're truly actually at the core. So the opposite of that, like so otherworldly that it's like coming into this lifetime, you almost needed to be uber earthy in order to even stay grounded and present here or to help to kind of embed your energy in this realm in a more impactful way. You had to just really take on a lot of earth energy. So there's something about that kind of peeking through these cards here, but it's also talking about this kind of, this really earthy energy. It's almost looking like that, like being really still, like kind of sitting in the forest and waiting for the wildlife to begin emerging or going back into its usual patterns and routines in order for you to witness it because this is interesting. It has something to do with what I just described about your true nature being otherworldly coming into this realm, needing to almost wear this earthy disguise, right? So there, there's something like that about kind of walking into the woods and being this other energy entering the woods and it causes all of the usual life there to, to hide, right? To, to scatter because things have shifted and changed and everything needs to kind of reorient itself. And there's a moment, there's some time there before it begins to reemerge again and show itself. And very few, very few have the ability or the patience to sit and, and wait long enough for the real magic to show itself in the way that you seem to have been able to tune into or tap into 
because I'm noticing this kind of little fairy here in the center. I want to say all of this energy around here is you. It's kind of just this like sitting and waiting, being as motionless as possible. So it's just talking about having a lot of patience and discipline and mastery in the way in which you either receive messages or inspiration or see the magic that you then put into your work or into your creation. You see what I'm saying? So it's like you're tapping into a really kind of deep level of magic or a rare level of synchronicity perhaps that few really attune to only because, well, maybe because they don't have perhaps the earthiness and the patience, the comfort that you have in just kind of being still and grounded. So that's been a real strength for you, right? With this stillness and the knowledge card coming next, right? It's talking about that again, too. It's this kind of, it's like scrying. I love these cards where they're kind of looking into the water, but seeing a reflection that doesn't match. So it's like, it's like seeing more depth, seeing kind of stories reveal themselves in the, in the surface of the water or the, you know, looking into a crystal, that whole beautiful scrying energy. So, but there's, again, kind of just talking about that you've perfected or come to know, come to have the wisdom that within stillness is when kind of your knowledge or your best ideas kind of surface with this knowledge card coming next. And so it's almost like you're, you're having the impulse or the inclination to really hunker down into that kind of a still energy right now in order to pull this out. Or you're kind of saying, why is it that this process that has always worked before is at, you know, at this very critical moment, it's not delivering to me the last piece of the puzzle so that I could just wrap up this project once and for all. If that makes sense. So, and the re I want to say the reason being is because something has shifted. Something has shifted where your usual routines and patterns or your usual way of gathering inspiration is actually somehow getting you almost farther away from the insight that you're looking for. Because I'm seeing this temptation card here as that, as kind of like routine and ritual habit, right? Something that you do habitually is actually kind of bringing in more, it's, it's shrouding the energy more. Perhaps because the part of it is that there's almost like a new tool or a new way of doing your work that is wanting to surface for you, but you're relying very heavily on the usual tools and the usual tools or vehicles, vessels, um, what's the other word, um, modalities, the, mod the modalities that have always worked in the past, you're because because they've always worked. But so, this is the thing, suddenly it's not working anymore, but it also has to do with this flexibility in this leadership position. You are in this leadership position and now it the moment has come for you to be flexible in that, which is interesting. It's almost like nobody really expects the leader to make a really abrupt character change. But that seems to be what is being asked of you or asked of this character at this moment. So, and the reason why I'm saying that about relying too heavily on the tools, this, well, it says joy music and this one says success. Um, is that, well, this one was really beautifully connected to this card, right? It was the same instrument. It's, I love when cards from different decks and different creators completely have just the, these images that work so beautifully together, right? So you see in this card, I mean, yes, joy. It talks about joy in music, of course. You know, if you're kind of hitting this creative block, writer's block type of energy, or you just can't pull in that last thing that you need, of course, taking a break from, you know, just going into joy, you know, having, having a playful moment can often bring it in. But it, it's, it's not just that, it's something other than that. It has something to do with 
the the aspect that you're looking for is not going to be found in the location that you usually look for your inspiration like this card often comes through a sacred space right it's almost like you have a routine or a ritual or a place that you go to to kind of get into alignment and receive the information that you need receive the download the inspiration the guidance whatever but it's saying it's it's other than that and then with this with this card here it this card has been coming up with the message of getting out of the boat right that's what i'm talking about about kind of abandoning the ves the vessel your means of transportation or your means of getting to the place that you want to go it's talking about it's it's other than that so it's not going to come through the usual tools or avenues or bit or avenues i guess that's the right word And then it's interesting because this last card here with the fool, it almost looks like a new character being introduced. A new character needs to be introduced or a new energy needs to be introduced here. It's almost like there's too much emphasis or reliance on this, on this leader, on this lead position. And what really needs to happen, it's like the lead position has gotten too kind of... Um, practiced in their ritual or practiced in their their process and it's keeping this this last bit or like this newest most obvious thing from being added to the mix because it's almost like it's kind of maybe just being bypassed or overlooked because there's already a very nicely worn pathway right so this is saying get out get off the pathway it may be, it may be a uh, harder work at first. I want to say that it isn't. It's almost like it has nothing to do with, it is definitely, there's an aspect here of that, like just put the whole thing aside for a while because it's like, it's going to come from other places because even when you're not working on your work or not writing your story, you're being exposed. That's, that's what this could be too, this fool energy. You're being exposed to, other energies or other experiences it's almost like this position here this character here needs to kind of bump into a new experience a new experience right and all of this is kind of tried and true energy so it's talking about this character isn't going to develop in the way that it is optimal for kind of wrapping this up in perfection if it doesn't kind of break the routine and have a fresh new experience so it could just be talking about like writing a new character into the into the storyline or it's talking about just put your work down for a time and just go out on a spontaneous adventure that has nothing to do with any of this and you may be surprised to discover that the characters that you bump into kind of out on your spontaneous roaming are going to give you those seeds that you need to really kind of bring this together because it feels like it's right there. It's like right at the completion point where it's, it's like the book is ready to be closed, right? But it's like you want a nice grand finale in a sense, a nice just crescendo moment to, to, maybe to kind of validate to you that maybe that you're on the right path or that this work was absolutely worth it or you need that as a sign that it is time to wrap this up and move on to a new experience right i mean you could do something completely radical here and just decide to wrap it up now it's that it's something like that, right? Just go, okay, well, that's done. I'm going to go do something else completely. So whether or not you're the author of this story, kind of writing a new character in kind of right at the last moment, I don't know much about story structure or any of that, but you know, is that, is that a wise thing to do? <clears throat> so writing in a character at the very last moment or whether you are this character that it's like right at the last moment you're going to if you abandon all of this work and discipline and attempt to be still it's almost like allowing it's like 
it's a really subtle energy, almost like trying to gather dew, something like that, right? Something really subtle and delicate and refined in its balance that you've perfected. And it's saying, give it a break. Go, go bump into this new character. It's like there's a new character waiting to interact with you that is just like it's they're, they're gonna have the energy the exchange is going to have within it the energy that you need to get this to put it together okay i think i'm gonna leave it there i'm kind of like wanting to maybe tip it into a direction of kind of like receiving this inner this inner guidance that leads you in your creation and or being more interactive with the story that surrounds you, right? Like seeing, seeing your life as an interactive story that has within it perhaps the elements that you need to wrap up this creative project. Perhaps setting out with that intention. Maybe that's what this is a little bit of talking about. Setting out on your day with a bit of an intention of like declaring or acknowledging because I feel like it's there always, but if you acknowledge it, it really kind of rises up to meet you. Acknowledge to the universe or to life that you are engaging, seeing it as an interactive experience, like you interacting with the story around you and saying to the story, show me what you got. Give me, give me the elements that I need. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there, Capricorn. I am gonna to continue to pull cards and see what else wants to come out about this. If you're interested in that, the link for the extended is in the description. And if not, I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.